This longing reaches back to the beginnings of the industrial age in the 19th century. The technological progress is accompanied by a complete reconstruction of society. The speed of this development takes a breathtaking and sinister course. Progress turns into a moloch. It causes a de-individualization of humans. It does not only free mankind, it also detains it in factories, in grey tenement houses. The more modern a society, the higher the interest in the fairy tale witch and her mystical origins. Well, I think it's one of the first things to realise is it isn't a sudden resurgence and that those stories about witches and ghosts have always been simmering beneath the surface and they've always been part of the you know, the peasant folk tradition from below. So I think that there's, certainly from above, if you like, if you want to look at it from above and below, there is suddenly an increased interest in trying to recapture something of an older folk tradition, and then the question is really, why is that, why at that point in time? Well, I think there are several different strands to this, one of which is certainly uh, industrialization, um, the development of commercialization, of European culture and at the same time perhaps people leaves educated people sometimes feeling that you know there's a bit of a spiritual vacuum beyond that and that maybe that you know that isn't everything in, in, in life. After the end of World War One all of Europe seems to be a grave of dead people and dead illusions. The search for past roots discovers monuments like the extern stones in the Teutoburg forest Nationalistically orientated Germans consider these natural structures a Germanic sacred place that was destroyed by Christianity. are very popular all over Europe. The most momentous of these sects is founded in England under the name Wicca. This new witch religion claims to be the heir of the pagan witch cult older than Christianity. Their followers pray to the Great Mother and to the Horned God, whom the Christians call Devil. Soon they move on to Germany. The Mount Brocken in the Hartz Mountains, the site of the Walpurgis Night in Goethe's Faust, turns into a heathen place of pilgrimage. 1932, English parapsychologists rub blood and honey onto a goat and murmur incantations. They want to find out whether there is truth in the old belief. But what they certainly were saying, they were, they were entertaining seriously, perhaps as a kind of political theatre, a very anti-religious concentration of power. One of the things about the proto-nationalist, or early nationalist or proto-Nazi movements, uh, in the 1920s, is that they're fundamentally anti-religious. Anti Less harmless than the Wicca cult is the secret order of the English Satanist Alistair Crowley. In 1925, an international meeting of occultists takes place in the Thuringian Veda. Crowley has himself proclaimed world saviour and the great animal 666. This is the biblical code for Satan. The meeting was organized by German followers of Crowley. A little later, however, they changed their opinion. In their eyes, there is another man who deserves the title of a true world savior and wizard, Adolf Hitler. Instead of Crowley, they now worship with religious zeal the charismatic and demonic leader of Hitler's party, NSDAP. Occult movements thus infiltrate the growing nationalism in the 20s. Es ist eine interessante Melange aus Sekte, sektiererhaften Erscheinungen. Äh, jeder behauptet natürlich von sich den Stein der Weisen gefunden zu haben. Man äh, pocht auf das Recht, Geschichte neu interpretieren zu müssen. 
The historic witches are called upon as witnesses against Christianity, which the Nazis hate so much. The myth of the wise herb women and red-haired Germanic women comes up. The church is said to have wiped out nine million of them. Es ist die Zeit, wo sich dieses negative Hexe aus den Grimms Märchen und diese Wanderung scheint in Deutschland auf einen sehr fruchtbaren Boden gefallen zu sein. Matilda Ludendorff is the first woman to turn witches into a topic of nationalistic propaganda. She is the wife of the Prussian general Erich Ludendorff, who prepared the way for Adolf Hitler. The Ludendorffs want to build a Germanic anti-Christian religion. They hope for Hitler's support. But after their victory in 1933, the new leaders have other plans. Hitler stages his own Germanic hero cults, and for his new invention of history, the former companions are in his way. For Hitler, the power over Germany includes power over the past. Pagan worship of witches doesn't fit into his Germanic Middle Ages. Yet occult ideas continue to spread in Nazi ranks and gain powerful followers. On top, one of the most dreadful figures of the German Reich, Heinrich Himmler, Reichsführer SS, a mass murderer, but also a spiritual maniac. He strongly believes to be the reincarnation of King Henry, who had lived in the 10th century and supposedly founded the Thousand Year Realm. With the SS, the Black Knights, Himmler has the ideal machinery to pursue his obscure ideas. Die Weltanschauung, die Himmler für die SS konstruierte, aufbaute, sollte die Religion protestantisch wie katholisch ersetzen. Er kreiert den Begriff gottlos für die Bezeichnung seiner Gefolgschaft und zwingt mehr oder weniger die Angehörigen seiner Elite, seiner Truppe aus den Gemeinschaften der Kirchen hinaus. Himmler's SS is not only to be the Nazis' secular military elite, but also its spiritual one. The Wevelsberg near Paderborn serves the high SS leaders as castle of their order. Here, Himmler concocts his secret cult under the sign of the Black Sun. 